Okay, everyone, welcome to my first video and my first M21 draft. Uh, so, kind of the point of this video is to kind of just show you guys how to hopefully draft. Uh, I don't think I'm a good player. I would say I'm mediocre at best, but I want to get better. And so, hopefully, by talking through my thought process of like draft picks and stuff, not only will I help myself, but maybe I can help some of you, uh, you know, more mediocre players as well. And with that, let's get drafting. Ooh, okay. So this is pretty good. It's a pretty good pack to open up right away. Uh, before I insta pick the Teferi, you know, I'm going to click it just so it'll pick it. But do we have anything else good in this pack? This card isn't horrible. Um... Tolarian Kraken's not bad either. I wasn't taking the Teferi. I'd probably be taking the Tolarian Kraken, but uh, yeah, I think that's probably the best the best card in the pack other than that. There's no like, good removal or anything like that. And this enchantment's just not something I really want. Feet of Resistance is also pretty good. Um, it's a really good like combat trick to, to basically get a free kill, which is nice. Yeah, we're definitely going to take right. Teferi Master. Who's time. ready for a good time? Like 100%. Ooh, the signpost for, for the Boros colors. Let's see what we got. Fresh is pretty good. It's a good way to stall out. A lot. Rousing Reed's also really good. Uh, the draw two discard one is is a really good thing, and it gives a creature flying plus a one one. Yeah, it's. I think I'm gonna take Rousing Reed. I don't, I don't see any creatures or removal that I want, and blue doesn't really have any removal, so we're gonna have to rely on going into. Probably green, black, or red for that. But I definitely think out of this pack, Rousing Reed is the best. Rain and Revelation is also good, but I don't think it's better than Rousing Reed. A close second would be Frost Breath, and I'm not a huge fan of Miscast because it's only instant and sorcery, which you don't really see in Limited too. Well, you see it in Limited, but not like super often. So we're gonna go with Rousing Reed. Hmm, Temple of Mastery. Chrome Replicator is okay. Um, if you ended up having a lot, like this is a really good like late game pick if you end up having like a lot of a certain card. But as of right now, I, it's gonna do nothing for me. Hmm. Nothing really stands out. The Snare Spinner is a really good defensive card. Ranger's Guile is also good to get rid of like removal spells. I could take the Temple. This is okay. It's not amazing, but it's okay. I... Is Snare Spinner the best card? It might be. Yeah, that's just. I just don't think that's worth it. And I might be wrong on this card, but I don't think it's worth it. Do I take the Temple? Temple versus Snare Spinner. All right, answered for me. Oops. <laughs> Uh, took the stair spinner. What's this card? As long as you control it. For... Oh. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, yeah, it's a really good defensive card. I, I think I'm going to take this. Um, Seed Striker is also really good. I shouldn't count Seed Striker out. Well, I think I think it's pretty good. It's done work for me in that last game. So maybe maybe I'm being a little too uh, too optimistic on the card. But I think Drowsing Tyranodon is pretty good here. It's a big body. Transmogrify, what's this card? Okay, so that's kind of like a build around. Basically, your best case scenario is you'd take something big and make it smaller if you're using it on the opponent, or you could build around it yourself. Okay. I don't super hate that. Archfiend's Vessel, it enters from... Oh, okay, so you need to get this from the graveyard. Uh, I'm going to pass on that, because otherwise it's just a one-drop. Although, if you were able to trigger the demon, it's pretty good. All right, so... I'm just going to take Tall Manima. Just because why not? It's in, it's in the colors right now. All right, for this one, Opt. Is all, like one opt is always pretty good. Death Bloom Thalad is pretty good. I think I might take the Death Bloom. 
think it's a little better than opt. Plus, I could probably always grab it. I guess I could kind of go into the recursion. Real top card of the library. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty good, I guess. It's between that or Titanic Growth. I'm going to take Titanic Growth because I don't have any removal. And honestly, combat tricks and stuff might end up being my removal if I end up in blue-green. Does this card? Put, oh, okay. Add a counter. All right. Not too bad. Hmm. But I'm not opposed to just going into black either. Actually, I'm going to take turn to slag. Just, just to have something. First pack. I'm just trying to stay a little open. All right, um, King Glide Master or the Cyclops? Probably gonna take the Glide Master. Glide Master is not great, but we're almost for sure gonna probably be in blue because of the Teferi, and since Teferi is double blue, splashing it's a little hard. Uh, Frost Breath here, I think. Port call is fine. Hmm. I'll take it. I'll take it. I could trade up later to for a free card, so it's not that bad. Um. Hmm. Of these, probably sure strike. I don't want to us. I'll take that. Don't really want any of them. Probably just put those in there. Alright. Bossery's Lieutenant. Protection from multicolored. Entrance battlefield. A 1 1 counter and target creature control. Oh, okay. So if you have a token, you get a 2 2. Waker of Waves, though. Ooh. He has like a weird cycle. This could be like a good card to close the game. Oh, but Watcher of Spheres is also here, too. Though I'm not super heavy into flyers, so I don't know if that's really worth it. That's pretty good. That's kind of like that uh, Spitfire Phoenix or whatever the, the flyer is called where if you take non-combat damage. I think Waker of Waves, though, is the best for the deck we have. Although Basri's Lieutenant's also pretty good. Yeah, I don't think it's worth it to take it because we don't have any white cards. So I'm going to take Waker of Waves. So there's a Sanctum. Definitely not in Sanctums. This is Dilphosaurus Death Touch. That's okay. Leafkin Avenger. Not what I really am looking for. Read the Tides. Draw three. Oh, that's really expensive though. Six mana I think is a little too much. Although six mana return to can be pretty good. I need. Uh, I do need something that'll. I do. I need, I need creatures, though. I think. Right now, I'm kind of split. I don't think I have enough. Okay, let's see what we got here. Griffinary. I uh, don't want that card. Don't want the Sanctum. Twin Blade Assassins actually could be something you could splash for. So I'm gonna consider that. But Library Arsonist works really well with, um, what is it, Rousing Reed. Mistral Stringle is also just a pretty good card. Hmm. I would probably take Library Arsonist. Because chances of me playing these are probably pretty low, so the prowess triggers are going to just be way less. Azula, the video I watched said this card's kind of a trap. I, I, I'm inclined to agree. A 3 for a 1 2 is just not good enough and with like a not great ability for limited. Must be blocked available to uh, as you gain. Eh. Not super excited to take that card, but I think I am going to take it. see here. So you could probably ignore all the white cards. Take a second rousing read, I think. 
The alternative would be Satessin Training. It's not as good though, considering I still get the, the like essentially I get the same amount of cards out of it. And it gets plus one plus one of flying. So I think rousing rate is just better in almost all ways. Other than the fact that it costs one more. So I, th I think the second rousing read is definitely where we go. Mm, I'm really, really low on removal though. Like I almost think I just take this finishing blow. I think I think I have to just because if I have to splash black for removal, I will. I don't want to, but I will. Uh, Larcenist. Uh, I'll take an off. Hmm. Alright, so this wield, so blue-white is completely open. At least coming from the left side. I think I'm going to take rookie mistake. This is like pseudo-removal. Hmm. Don't really want any of these. Take the land. Uh, do I just run a cancel? Or the dismal? I think I'm gonna take the dismal black water just in case we have to do. Just in case we have to use black. And I think the death touch is better than the anima. Yeah. Now, now I'll just try and. Take some of these land cards here to fill it out. Yeah, so I was saying I think the second death touch is better than a second tome anima just because of the death touch ability. I'll never play blue. I'll never play this card. Uh, I'll never play this card either. So that, was, that can just go away. And we'll take the land here. Fire emancipation. Oh, this is a triple damage. A super cool build around, but not what we necessarily want. Okay. Is it worth it for me to go into red, turn to slag? I'm not going to be able to run because of dual red mana. Oof. Hmm. Like, does give me an X mana, uh, like a colored mana every turn. I don't think I necessarily want it, though. I, I think I want... Uh, Soul Seer is not bad. But is it... I don't know if it's any better than... Finishing blow. I think I'll take an, another Larcenist. Let's just take that. Second Waker of Waves. Is that too many Waker of Waves? I don't think so, because I could cycle them. Yeah, I, I really don't think so. But let me look at the rest. Hmm. Lost in the Isle is a little too hard to, to use. Ooh, Fungal Rebirth, though. I could, that could combo with a few things. Hmm. Okay, so it's easily between these two. I don't know which one's better. I think I'm going to take the second waker. Let's see, this is some snake. This one, I want to look at the other stuff first, though. Okay, so this is like a plus two, plus two instant. That might be the best thing we have. Yeah. So this is like Death Touch against Planeswalkers, the snake. I think Invigorating Surge is the best we have, though. Uh, Cause it, I have one or two other things. I think I have one or two other cards that give a plus one. Maybe I don't, actually. Yeah, I don't think I do. But we'll still take that. I've seen a decent amount of Sanctums. Hmm. No, well, that's not too bad. That ability is pretty good. Um, let's see. I have a lot of three drops, but I don't think I have enough creatures. Still. And I have an opt already, so I think I'll take the Pride Malkin. This card's dumb. I mean, this card's kind of cool, but it's dumb. Like, the only, I guess, like, the best effect is, like, it just ends the turn, right? Let's see. I think I take... 
Just let's read the tides. Uh, I'm definitely gonna take another snare spinner here, I think. Maybe the Gnarled Sage, as long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn. Yeah, I think Snare Spinner is still better because we need more two drops. And I, it's better than Vidalkin for this deck. And I'm not going to need the Prismite most likely. Because I'm probably going to try and just get rid of this. Yeah, so we'll go for that. What the hell is this? Ooh. Okay, maybe I run this instead of both the... Uh, nah. I think both the Wakers are still a little better. And I just take another Keen Glide Master. It's better than life goes on, at least in colors. Kirk Scorehorn, track down, run a foul. See, the thing is, it's only flying though. I guess I could give it Rousing Reed, right? And make him sacrifice it. I think Rookie Mistake's just a little better. Let's see. I'll take Rookie Mistake. Epitaph Golem. I don't have a 5 drop, it looks like. No, I'll take the Epitaph Golem. Just that. Hey, the Fungal Rebirth came back. Look at that skill. Uh, I'll take another vine. I'm going to take Silent Dart because it's something in terms of removal. And I'll probably play it. Take the Prismite. Just give me options. And that Crypt is pretty much useless. The Crypt's useless in, in uh, best of one, actually. I might straight up run the Silent Dart. Uh, so yeah, we definitely don't want reds. Yeah, I don't need that. There's me to cut eight. Prismite is probably worse than the other cards that I have. But since I'm not really in the spells deck, I could probably just take out some of this other stuff. I think having two of these isn't necessarily bad. Uh, due to the fact that they turn into cards later. It's almost better than some of the other stuff. And I'm going to be very conservative on cutting my instant tricks. I'd rather get rid of some of the other stuff first. Uh, so like read the tides. I don't think I need that card. I think that'll end up being a hindrance to me. I'm definitely going to run 117. I could maybe push this to 18. But... I don't know if I necessarily want to. I will have to tinker with the manner of it too. Hmm. All right, how many creatures do I have to drop? I could probably get rid of one of them because I have all these, and I could probably get rid of a rookie mistake too. I don't think I need both of them. And I think that is probably my worst instant. So you know what? I'm going to get rid of this as well. Hmm. What else to cut? I would like to cut probably another non-creature. I mean, at this point, it's probably the opt, I would say. Because I have enough, like, I have enough cycling and stuff to just get by. Though the Silent Dart might be worse then, because it's 5 mana for 3 damage versus, say, 1 mana for Rookie Mistake. Hmm. I don't know if it's better or worse, like, to be honest. Because it's the only target creature I can't even, like, use to chip away someone at the end. And by the time I could actually use it, it's probably not worth using, so... I'll probably take Rookie Mistake over it. Right? 
Or did I take out Rookie Mistake and add the Opt? Yeah, we'll, we'll run the Opt. We'll run the Opt. We'll see how that works. Okay. Let's get into the games. Oh boy. Ran into some technical issues there. But we're back in. It's time to actually get into the gameplay. Hmm. Is this keepable? I don't think so. I think I can't run. Oh, well, this is even worse. But I'm not gonna mulligan twice and limit it. I think, like, one. I actually really like that mulligan rule that they added. Um. A little bit ago. That I forgot what it, I forgot which one it was, but they took it out, and I was a fan due to the fact that it made limited games a lot, a lot nicer to mulligan on. Because like mulliganing in limited feels so bad; it feels bad every time too. So, not a huge fan of it. Oh man, okay, that's a really good ramp. Do I frost breath it? So the way you can't ramp. I don't think so. I think I just go ahead and play my Delta Sword here. Hmm. This card's super good. Oh, well that sucks. Yeah, unfortunately these games might go quick because I don't have any ramp. Or not, not any ramp, I don't have any removal. Uh, play Tome Anima. Hopefully by a turn to get the Epitaph Golem out. But Hunter's Edge is so good, that's like the one card I was missing. Okay. Alright, alright. Chill. Chill guy. Do I play the fairy? The fairy dies, right? If, if it goes in. Well, it'll be a five. Hmm. I think I have to. Just to even pull some of the some of the stuff off of you. Probably get rid of the titanic growth at this point. Or the epitaph golem. Hmm. Titanic growth, I think. Because if he swings with both, I phase one out. Uh, I lose three, lose one. Okay, so I'm definitely just going to do the draw and discard again. Get rid of the op. Oh, too fast. All right, now is it better to frost breath or play the epitaph golem? I think I frost breath. Make sure that he can't use either of those. Do the draw and discard. And I will get rid of that. Play the snare spinner. God, this... Hold on, this audio is so loud. For my headset. Oof, okay. That's a little unfortunate. Trigger that. This is the worst card. Let him hit me. I don't have time for this. Teferi's pretty strong. Though I think he dies now, right? I should have done that first. Um Yeah, we're gonna get rid of one of the Waker of Waves. Get rid of the rousing reed. Basically, I need to play this Waker of Waves. Short. And or find the, the revival card. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. What'd he do? Oh, he got the Palladium back. 
Okay. Do the draw. Go to the second rousing read. Let's see, that's seven. Play the canopy stalker. And keep everything up. Obviously, I'll trade the, the stalker for something. Totally okay digging deep. Can't use that land though, unfortunately. Those trades, perfect. Defense had an imperfection. Gain three life. It's an extra, extra plus on this. Ooh, okay. So now I use a flying card, and I could get death touch. All right. Give it. Do I give it to this? Yeah, I think I give it to this. Then again, screw that up. Should have done this first. Get rid of the spider. No attacks. And I could actually start using this ability, actually. I did think I would use this ability, but I could start to. Oh no, I messed up. Messed up. Oops. Shit. Unfortunately, like top deck land. I'll just put a rousing read on the bottom. All right, so I need to do this first, so that way I could get rid of the the vine. Now we're just gonna grind them out, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully I don't mill myself. I guess I can't as long as the epitaph golem is alive, but yeah, we're, we're getting into a little, oh, what the hell is this? Is this that news people were talking about? Exile target creature from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, put a 1-1 counter. Oh no. From a, for, from any graveyard, what? Damn, okay, that card's amazing. Holy crap. I don't have time for this. Do I even want to do the draw? Because what if it's a land, right? Let's see, he's got, he's got two creatures, and I've got, what, one, two. Okay, so I'm going to start putting creatures back. Basically. So you can't keep growing that. Can I pick this? Whoa. Okay. This is what I'll do to try and counter it. At least the epitaph golem. <laughs> I just want to get it up. phased out. I won't be able to do the epitaph shenanigans. I could do it twice. It's going for a six. Start to get him low at least. Okay. He should have... The tapper actually kind of screwed him there. He should have used uh, all black mana for it. Hmm. I think I've got a. I think I have to fairy. I'm doing 
again. <clears throat> Get your forest. Fortunately, now I don't. This is instant or sorcery. Oh, it's an instant. Nice. Okay. So. I will go ahead and attack these three. <laughs> so <laughs> this happened to have Goldman said so much work. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. I can't even with the card right now. Like holy crap. Do I just cast this now? Creature died, yeah. I think it's best just to cast it right now before he could do some shenanigans and stop the growth. Just get a canopy spider back with two sapperlings. He's out of mana to ooze, so. And it, it lets me throw away. It lets me throw it away if I need. It, just if I just want to grow to fairy again, so. Alright, sweet. Picked up a win there. Uh, honestly, at the start, I was a little worried, but, you know, we got it. Hopefully my game won't crash again. All right, going into this, hopefully my game won't crash on load. I guess that is part of the issue uh, running this on Linux, that sometimes it does break. Let's see what we got. Okay. Hmm. Sand. Sand isn't necessarily really keepable. I don't really have anything to do. This one's a little better, and I think I'd throw back the Titanic Road. So at least I could... <laughs> at least I could place... Uh, I was able to play something last round, too, but... Or last hand, too, but... Yeah. Ooh. Not what I necessarily want to see. I'd like to see green source. Green source or cheaper stuff. But I think some of my cheap my cheaper creatures are a lot of them are green, so that's highly unfortunate. Another not amazing start to what looks like to be a Rakdos aggro deck. So yeah, not very good. Get a creature out just because if I have to block that magma's pretty good. Two two with a ping ping ability in case you can get through that's pretty that's actually really nice really nice for a common creature oh shit the bull town okay I think I take six here or no I take five I think I just have to okay Still not what I wanted, but not complete. Tome Anima. Hopefully kill the Bolt Hound without getting uh, a removal spell cast against my Tome Anima here. Yeah, I may have just whiffed too hard on my opening hand to really recover from this, so... Okay, it's not terrifying. What is this creature eating? Like a person or what? Okay, he's probably got a combat trick, but I have to just let him play it. Yeah. <laughs> Any day. I'll try and opt, all right, sweet. Least I could do this now. 
gives me something to block pretty nicely into this Bolton and the Magma. And I don't think I blocked the Hobble Fiend because... What the hell is this card? Indestructible. What? Ooh, okay. Oh, that's super. This card's super cool from a design perspective. It's an indestructible 1-1 one, one that basically just fights people to deal damage to something else. That's super neat. This card's going to screw me, but it's super cool because I have no way of getting rid of this. Okay, can't sack. They can still kill me. Let's say that's probably the best. They got a rousing raid, hopefully, into a land. Okay. Did not get the land. Um, put the golem on the bottom. Play the fate spinner. Draw a card. There's my land. Get extra life, but I don't think it'll matter. I think he could just start doing this, right? They start doing this into me, and I just start taking a lot of damage. Uh, the Frostbeth will buy me a little bit of time. Actually, you know what? I'm going to block the Hob Fiend. The Hobble Fiend. Because it's, it's almost better if he lets me... If I don't just get to kill it, he has to use his last spell. Or he has to sack one of these two creatures, which I'm probably a little more afraid of these two at some point. Him attacking with this is actually a poor choice. He should have he should have fought that, which makes me think he does have the removal like he has some sort of removal or uh, combat trick for the hobble fiend, which I will take here. Um. Oh, okay, all, all the creatures got it. Okay. Alright, so we'll do that. So let me cast this. Sweet. So. Next Brash Hunter, a little less scary. Card, go in. And I just wins on that, so. Should have Frost Breathed first. Ah, uh, no, there's nothing I could have done. I couldn't have raced him. Even if I frost breath, that still only buys me two turns. Maybe he won't notice that he could do that. Like straight up, he may just not notice that he could do that. Cause, cause he, oh my god, he did that. He played right. <laughs> I thought he would have had more mana. <laughs> oh, dude, dude, if you just did this, <laughs> if you just did that. I have to block the spell, the spell gorger if he goes in. Okay, so now what I'll do here. Oh no. Oh, this guy fucked up so hard. Uh I literally just wanna play this just in case. I should have attacked first, actually. Should have attacked first. No, no, because I need the rising read on the waker waves, and so I could not have attacked first. Yep, and I won. Oh my god. This guy fucked up so hard. Oh boy. Oh, that is such a misplay on his part. Alright. This. I do it sometimes too, like I, I can't blame that guy. Sometimes I don't read the cards fully, you know. Sometimes it just happens. So we should not have won that game, but we did, so now we're 2-0. <laughs>
Okay, we're now we're against Ogo Pogo zero zero zero. Let's see what he brings. Okay, all right, all right. This is the kind of hand I kind of want. You know, good defender to start something that does something at least on turn two. I think the Glide Master is not too great, but but it's it, it's at least relevant turn two for like a chump blocker and does have some some value later on if you, if I could get you know an Epitaph Golem or my uh, World Waker or whatever that card is called over you know that's value. If Fungal Rebirth that instant's really good actually. In my opinion. Mm -hmm. So we have since we have the fungal, I might just cycle this. Uh, let's see if he takes this block. I would love for him to take that block, but yeah. Wait. Oh, put one of them in your hand, the other into the graveyard. Yes, yeah, so I'll take Tome Anima. I could have waited to do that at the end of the turn. I should I should have waited. Looks like he's mono white, or he just hasn't drawn a second color. Okay. Go with that. Again, I will take a trade on anything here. I maybe slammed this down a little too early. Probably should have played the Dilfer Sword, the Tome Anima, because now I can't do anything else, which is kind of unfortunate. Though I might sacrifice this guy. Is this an artifact? No, okay. Alright, so the effect doesn't trigger. Though now this card is pretty useless, so let's get a card out of it. Okay, and now we have to fairy. Why is the fairy cost? Oh! Oh, I forgot this Pegasus makes things cost a little more. Hmm. Yeah, we're just gonna go with the Tef Golem. Just because it blocks the Mutt, puts us into a parry, like, kind of like a parody state. He's got, what, four? Total six, seven this turn. With the Palladium Mirror. The flyer gets his dog over. Dude, he only took that. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna take the three. That's not too bad. Let's see, playing to fairy now means that he ends up in a situation where. So I'll attack here. Playing to fairy now means that he ends up in a situation where he gets to play a lot. Like he'll come over with flyers, so I don't necessarily want to play the to fairy right now. Mm, the Dilphos. I'm gonna play the Tome Animal. Is it, that Pegasus is actually screwing me up. Oh shoot. Okay, so this dog gets this one. Wait, whenever pack leader attacks for all combat damage, that would be done to dogs. So I trade for this dog, right? I think I kind of have to. Fortunately, I lose both, but I almost have to. To do it. Because I don't have removal, right? So I kind of need to do something. Okay. I just pass and then fungal rebirth and opt on this turn. Nothing died. I don't think he's gonna attack into. All right, so he did it. He was waiting for that green man the entire time. D 
don't want the second Delphosaur. I don't mind the land right now. I could bring back Waker of Waves. I don't get the Sapperlings, but I think it's still worth it because I could slam the Waker of Waves this next turn. Neutering a lot of his attack. I don't know if he said because the dog is white, red. So I don't know if he's like really focused on the dog stuff. I think he just happened to play this dog. Um, a lot of. So I will attack now. Because a double block will do nothing. Actually, a double block still did nothing. Hmm. Wait. Oh, if, oh, okay, okay. So no, no cheating in creatures, basically. So white's removal relies a lot on tapping, right? So let me attack the epitap golem. So as long as waker waves never taps, I think he should be okay, at least in white and green, because he doesn't have any large creatures to fight it. And it needs to be tapped to take damage. Although I think there is one that's like target creature with four more power gets destroyed or something like that. So now I will play the Teferi. Start doing these good. shenanigans. And we'll get rid of the Dothosaur. Maybe it needs double green. Take care of my canopy stalker. Okay. So I could rousing read him. Two, discard one. I'll go in for the attack. There we go, that's what I was waiting for. Trying to bait it out. And I get to play this. And then now I could phase if I need to. So yeah, I was waiting for the swift response here. Let's take the one. I don't have time for this. Question is, does he have a second swift response, right? I think I have to go to the large thing. Yeah, sweet. Okay. Woo! If he had the second switch response, that would have sucked. I think I would have been okay, because I could have played these two. The other Larcenist and the the cat. And then played my next Waker of Waves with Teferi. But but I'm I'm glad they just didn't have it. That, that was a lot easier. Um, so Teferi's really good. Like, Teferi has done so much work already. Yeah, the the even just the plus one loot every turn is insane right that means you like per turn cycle you see three cards like even if you disregard the phasing because like the phasing's like okay to protect a fairy if you know you could set them up better next turn right Ooh, i don't like this hand but i think i'm gonna keep it because because i think i can as long as we don't see aggro should be okay but as i was saying the phasing isn't super great unless you know you could buy yourself enough time to like protect Teferi, which is nice, right? But just even the looting, like the plus two every turn is super, super powerful. Hmm. 
Okay, so blue or black white life gain looks like. Or at least black white probably has some of the life gain shenanigans. Uh, let's see. There's a minus four, minus four at black black. Ooh, he has veto. Okay. So this is really good. Hmm. Do I rousing read now or wait? I think I rousing read now and honestly just start to to punt him. Could get rid of the second island, I think. I basically didn't want to do nothing that turn. Needs the swift response. I take four. Because of the veto. If he gets a block off, sweet. Then we get attack and force a block on one of these other two, which is really good. A little less good now. Um, though I can still do this. Force a block. And worst case scenario, I take one. Oh, shit. Ah, no, he had another creature, you son of a... Oh, no. That's not good. Alright, so that puts me on, like, a very short clock. That's smart. Smart to attack, just in case if I had a way to... Get rid of it. Hmm. Okay, I think I have Larcenist and Pride. Yeah. Just to kind of buff up stuff. I mean, I'll take the free creature. Kind of just get rid of it here. Yeah, this is bad though. Oh no, that could like never get through. Luckily, the the activation is pretty expensive, so <laughs> this is very thing. My skills are eight. Let's see, it costs five to activate. Yeah, I'll eat, I'll eat, I'll eat whatever, to be honest. That may have been a misplay, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> no, the life gain lands. The ping damage. Alright. So he's going to attack with anointed... Choister, right? Is he also going to attack with the steed? Okay, so what he's going to do is he's going to activate this. And that. So then I will block here and here. I get to keep one creature and then I'm going to phase out the choice choister yeah after he casts that phase that out resolve it's my turn okay play my waker do, the, do that I probably don't care about tome anima at the moment I'd rather get more cards in hand 
because I'm going to need something that lets me blow this guy up. Uh, he clerics does three damage to me. That's pretty good. That's not even considering anything in his hand. I th think he might have enough removal to really screw me up. This guy's deck actually is, is pretty well built for this. You may sacrifice a creature and discard a creature if you draw a card. Okay, well, we'll see what he does. I don't think he does it, though. Unless he gets rid of Crypt Lurker itself. I, I don't think it's worth it to get rid of the, the anointed card, the anointed creature. Just because of the, the lifelink will win him the game. Alright, let's do this again. The Dilphosaur versus the Larcenist. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna get rid of the Larcenist because the Dilphosaur is death touch. Let's me kill something. Before we do anything dumb. Let's do this. Fungal rebirth, get rid of that. Blow this guy. Gotta attack for seven. He'll probably just let it through. Sounds about right. Do I have anything worth reviving? We'll wait and see. Oh man. No. I, I mean, I will face out the veto if I need to, but we'll see what happens. Oh no. Put a one counter on each. Oh my gosh. Well, that's not good. Okay, let's see what I can do here. Okay, he's gonna pass. Titanic growth. I think I have to get rid of Titanic growth, right? I don't think in any reality I keep it. And I think I cast this now for... Canopy Stalker. Rousing Raid would have also been an interesting card to take. Let's see, I can't do both. We'll do this first. Now I can do both. Sure, it might die. Let's see, that becomes a four five. Do I just? Ex like face out the veto. I might have to. I might actually have to. Cause I don't. I don't necessarily care if he gets life. I just care if I die because of it. Right. We'll see. We'll see what his card is. Hopefully, something dead. Doesn't matter. But if I can, if I can, like, his best option is literally to do nothing. Like, if you just do nothing, I think you end up winning the game almost. Like, I guess he has to do with Waker of Waves or World Waker. What was I calling him before? World Waker, Waker of Waves. Okay, so he's going in for this attack. Let him buff it. Phase out that. See what I could get. Definitely pitch that. Or that. 
<laughs> Ooh, it's so close, man. If he had the white shrine, if he had another shrine, it'd be game over. There's like nothing I could have done. I would be able to do. The benefit is I could attack with everything and win next round. Well, mm, hold on, hold on. Can I? Yeah, I can because I could phase something out. So he spent five on that? He'll gain four. Which still puts me at lethal if he attacks with everything. He, I mean, he doesn't have the removal because I think he would have already used that. I mean, I still have to block, right? Right, I still have to block this. Well, hold on. So if I phase that out. So if I phase this out, he loses. Like that won't take any damage. And I attack with everything, and he he's forced to block this. But I take a damage from Bazzer's acolyte, plus a two damage here, so I die next turn. I s but do I win? I th well, uh, yeah, I think I have to do that. And then just see what I get off the top. Right. I mean, I'll... Def no! I didn't mean to do that! Shit! I just attack with everything. He has to block the Canopy Walker. And as long as he can't give something life gain, I think I win. Because he has to block with Vito somewhere. Though he could block the 2-2, two -two, but I still think I do 11 damage. That's enough. Yeah, this is enough. Oh my god, that was close. Woo! Okay, that was the right play, at least for that moment. That was a close game. Okay, uh, doing well so far. We're already we're at least over a fifty percent win rate here. Four and three. Let's keep going. <laughs> now we got Eddie Winslow. Let's see what you're bringing to the table, Eddie. Okay, decent opening hand. Have uh, smaller stuff to play. Nothing too aggressive, but I don't think my deck's necessarily aggressive anyway. Go ahead and we'll start with that. With my sleepy dinosaur here. Play the Glide Master. Can't do any. Uh, maybe I should have played the Glide Master because then I could have done two damage this turn. Yeah, that was that was a slight mistake. I'll play the Tome Anima because I don't really want a Rousing Reed either. These guys. I'd rather Rousing read the Tome Anima to get the the Drowsing Tyranodon out. So that we will definitely Rousing read this. So this guy still has no instance. All right, Eddie Winslow brought nothing to the table. He must have not got a second uh, second mana, and that's what nine damage this turn. Yeah, nine damage without the ability to do something kind of sucks. Sorry, Eddie. That. That is highly unfortunate. All right. Let's see if we get a. Uh oh. Shit, my game didn't load. But all right. No, I didn't mean to concede. 
No, I meant to just quit. Oh no. Again, Linux problems. All right, we're back after that accidental concede. Uh, sometimes the wine instance doesn't load the back, like the actual battlefield itself. I did not mean to concede. I meant to kill the application, and relaunch it to reconnect. But you know, sometimes you misclick buttons. So that is on me. I made whoever that person is very happy. Oh god, I'm so dumb sometimes. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Yeah, so if anyone's interested, I'm using a program called Lutris on Manjaro Linux to run this game. Uh, I typically do use Linux mostly for development, and ever since uh, Valve added Proton into Steam, I've been using it for gaming too, because for the most part, I would say like 85 plus percent of my games actually run well in Linux, so it's a viable gaming operating system now. Okay, looks like we got blue black, the keen glide master for that. I guess if I don't have a card to play, I'll play the the tab land. Next. Okay, I did get a card to play. I think I play it. Let's just get rid of the tap land. So this is good. He gets free tax in, unfortunately. The capture sphere. I'm okay with that, though. Capture sphere on this, like, other than the fact that... Well, actually, I might as well block that. I could still use his ability, so it's not like completely lost. Dilphosaur to kill this because I can't play both of them at the same turn. I want to get rid of his Larcenist in any way possible. What, what does this do? Oh no. Oh, goodbye Dilphosaur. Alright, Roman Ghost Light. Doing work. With some more... More kind of like a control-ish type of game here. Okay, that's... Devil Star is still the best. He's gonna get three damage in with his Ghost Light. Ghost Light's a really good... Oh my god, he has a second one! Okay. Okay, now I'm worried. Now I'm worried. This, uh, Grixis colored deck is stomping on me here. Not much I could do about it either. Alright, hold on. Uh... Alright, I need to put a little more power out, actually. I think I block and sack the portcullis, but I think I lose because I take six damage this turn. I don't have either of my spiders to block it, the ghost lights. And even so, I think this guy's just got enough gas to keep getting through. Yeah, that's that's game. We'll finish it out, but, but that is uh, definitely game here. Oh, yeah, the misplay was probably putting this on. I guess I had to, right? I, I didn't really have any other options, I suppose. Let's see. Sack that right away, draw a card. <laughs> draw an opt, perfect. Um, yeah, I actually don't even think I could... Yeah, I can't live. He gives uh, one of those creatures flying and goes over. So that's a good game. Like, he, he had a very efficient deck at getting flyers going. And getting his larcenist then. Hopefully that accidental concede is not the end of my run here. But it looks like it might be. So, I guess, uh, reap what you sow. Right. Okay, do I mulligan this? I think I'll keep it because I do have the glide master. Also, I realized I never adjusted my lands. 
probably should have done that like a long time ago during the deck building process. So far it hasn't messed me up, so I'm not like too upset by it. So play this, see if he'll waste any removal on it for some reason. So we got red white. Okay. The dog. See if he'll take the trade. Probably will not. I'd be surprised if he did. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this. Um, play that. Sir Spanner should block most of the creatures at this level. They, he it won't kill them because he's well he might play flyers because he's and he does have white, but I'm not too concerned. And that dog probably stood to do more damage than my uh, my keen glide master does. Maybe he did kill it because of the ability to give it flying. Okay, so prowess card. Uh, that's pretty good. It's because uh, especially here you can damage and sack. Um, just for the Dilphosaur. That's a pretty good sack card. Like, just one to sack it, so. It's not bad. It's an interesting card. Be really good to. Uh, So if I do this, he's gonna kill both for sure, right? Like I think in any, well, no, because he can't kill both then. He can't sack and do, deal damage, so I'll definitely just take that trade. Oh, well that sucks. Didn't think about that card. That is highly unfortunate. What is that? Feet of Resistance. This card's really good. This is probably one of the better combat tricks because of the protection and the fact that you get a counter. It's really good. That might be the best combat trick. The, at least the ones I could think of right now. Okay. Alright, Glorious Anthem it is then. Block into that, I'll take five. I think I almost have to do it. I have to s trade them out. Do I just take another four? Maybe I do. Maybe I do just take another four for this next round. Depends on what he plays, I suppose. Because I don't know if the card draw is worth it. Like, I truly don't know. I guess it's probably not, because if he could just do a bunch of, uh, like, cheap combat trick shenanigans, it puts me on, like, a super low turn, like, turn count to live. Okay, Siege Striker is pretty good. Definitely going to do this at this point in time. Oh, man. I think this is game. I <laughs> think... That concede is what screwed me up. Broke my uh, broke my win streak. Set me on a losing streak. Um, also, 
I think that one of my weaker parts of drafting currently is the actual drafting process. I don't think I do enough research into the cards and analysis before get going into drafts because uh, I do tend to when I'm ranking up in draft, I do tend to get better as I play more and more drafts, obviously because like I'm more familiar with the, the format. Um, the problem is I typically only probably play about 20 drafts of any set. So I'll play, I'll grab the Canopy Stalker. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, I think that's that, like the actual drafting process is where I could focus more efforts to get better quality decks. Because I do think that is my weaker, my weaker portion of playing the game. All right, so we have the uh, the vine to block the siege striker. Make sure, but to, uh, maybe I don't even block this turn. Actually, maybe I do not. The problem is, if you could do something uh, like the canopy stalker is going to go after the heartfire emulator for sure. The Siege Truck, I don't really have a good way to get rid of it. It pretty much kills everything I have now with Glorious Anthem, so. Things are looking bleak. And that it makes it worse, because she could give it, uh... Let's see, yeah, she could give it unblockable. Dang. Subira's really good, actually. I really like this card. It's just overall, it has like everything you would want. Especially in a red deck. Yeah, so now he could just tap pretty much both these guys, do 8 damage to me, and I can't stop it. And it's that's good, he's got a lot of health, so no matter what, nothing's going to get taken by the Canopy Stalker, because they can't, they can't block. I think he wins. Because he gives them an unblockable, tr taps it again. I have to get something really good off of this. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter, even if I give it to him. Yeah, and that's game. All right. Well, I did okay. I think it went, what, five and three in one game was, you know, undetermined. Maybe I would have won that game. Who knows? But five and three, not too bad. Uh, wish I could have done more. Like I said, one thing I did screw up for sure. Oh, actually, no. My uh, my icons are even. Never mind. So that was okay. I don't think I needed to go to 18 lands. I think, I think this ended up, the 17 ended up being the right call. I think ro some rookie mistakes maybe could have gone in for the opt. I feel like the opt never really did anything for me. And I don't know if I needed both both vines. Uh, they, they never felt super great when I got them later on. Uh, this would have at least done something for me. Uh, I could have maybe run the third Larcenist. Or the, the second Keen Glidemaster. I don't know. I don't know if how I set that up was necessarily the, the worst thing. And I think I overestimated Titanic growth. It did help me win one game, but other than that, I think I pitched it most times. Uh, my deck definitely required a lot of me drawing to fairies in the wake of waves to, to kind of like win. Otherwise, I had no real game plan. So, so yeah, like I said, my biggest takeaway is this is, I think I did okay for my second draft. I definitely need to look at researching the stuff, the the set, before getting into my first few drafts. That way I have a better idea of like what to look out for and like what cards I should be thinking about while I'm playing. And maybe even getting a little better at the deck building process too. Obviously there's always room for improvement, but, but I think, yeah, my biggest weakness is the actual drafting phase. And hopefully in the next one, that's what we'll focus on. Anyway, if you happen to like this content, please uh, click subscribe or give me a like button. And if you dislike it, hit that dislike button, you know, uh, just, just give me the info so I know and I can, I can make better decisions. And thanks for watching.